Welcome to October. This is where teams start to separate themselves from one another. This is where college football begins to get even crazier and crazier. And after last week, you know, things were a little bit crazy, you know, a little just a little bit, not not too much, but very much so a crazy time in which we can all enjoy and laugh and get anguished over. But this week, oh boy, oh boy, let me tell you something. There are games that have a lot of meaning very, very early. Things are about to get really, really spicy. And we start on Friday night this time instead of Saturday night. I will be watching both of these games on Friday night. So kudos to these four teams that will have the luxury of getting to see me um, see their teams, you know. But let's start with Iowa Maryland. This game is first up on Friday night. It actually comes first. Um, we're wondering. We're all wondering is Iowa looking ahead to that big matchup with Penn State? Are they looking ahead? Well, with Tua's brother, Talia, and the Terps catch those Hawkeyes off guard. Because, I mean, Maryland's a team that has been giving teams, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem this year. I mean, they're still undefeated, right? Right? Unless I'm, unless I'm wrong. Let me, let me check real quick. I'm not wrong. Maryland is still undefeated. I'm not wrong. And Iowa needs to be making sure they do not get themselves caught, you know, in a trap. BYU-Utah State is also Friday night, and BYU looks to continue their momentum. There, there's been some game times that were revealed for October the 9th. And BYU had, may, might have another national stage to, you know, Held themselves out there, flexed their muscles, but they did not look too good against USF Saturday night. And, you know, it, it seemed like, in my recap, it seemed like it seemed that um, BYU was going to cruise easily, but then USF started to score and make it closer than what it needed to be. And Utah State is a much better team than USF. I mean, sure, Utah State got absolutely destroyed by Boise State this past weekend, but Utah State was undefeated before that, and they are no slouch. They are no slouch at all. So, let's get into that noon slate. Oh boy. On Saturday, oh my goodness, a top 10 matchup. Arkansas, Georgia. It's at noon? It's at noon? My goodness. You know, I hate it that this matchup got selected for noon but it's okay it's okay it, it all makes sense now because there's a lot there's a lot of interesting things happening you know this Saturday so it's not the only matchup that makes absolutely no sense as far as where it's time will be because there's another top 10 matchup that doesn't make any sense where it's time is either that's because you know but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute so how will Georgia fare against a very scrappy, very, very tough Arkansas defense? We're talking, this is probably one of the best defenses that Georgia has played, you know, aside from Clemson. And, I mean, we all know that Clemson has pretty much collapsed, basically, this year. So, was that really something, was that really Georgia, you know, just, you know, pouring on the defensive onslaught or was it really you know Georgia's offense you know was it was it really you know that bad against an actual team that makes you know that makes them flinch a little bit because you know Georgia's been firing on all cylinders the past few weeks but it hasn't been against the best competition in the world you know South Carolina's not going to do anything to you and I mean you, again you know this is this is the time for Georgia to actually prove themselves, and there were some injuries to both KJ Jefferson and Burks. I believe it was the wide receiver, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there were some injuries in that Texas A&M game for Arkansas, so hopefully those guys will be okay. Um, and will that hinder the Hogs a little bit? These injuries, you know, maybe they're like day-to-day -day injuries. So I'm not I'm not entirely sure, um, but there have been some big injuries for 
the Razorbacks, and that needs to get corrected. You know, it's going to be a long season, and if Arkansas wants to survive the grind, they got to get healthy. They got to get healthy really quick. Um, I don't know why. I don't even know why I'm talking about Michigan, Wisconsin. Aside from the fact, is you know, can Michigan can they find a passing game? Because I saw a stat. That said, they only passed it 25% of the time, and they almost blew the game to Rutgers. This could not happen against Wisconsin, and I have no idea what Wisconsin is going to do, you know, themselves. Because, I mean, this, this game really means nothing for the Badgers now. They are pretty much eliminated from playoff contention. You know, they lost both their big games already, you know, to Notre Dame and to Penn State. And, you know, what what's the quarter? Something's got to give, you know, Graham Mertz is... Basically, you know, they, they got rid of Jack Cone for Graham Mertz. You know, Wisconsin did, and it just has not worked out. So something's got to give for the Badgers. Something's got to give. They got to do something. They got to revamp the offense. Got to do something to keep Michigan off guard because that Michigan defense is still scary. Still scary defense, you know. But I'm wondering, can Michigan find a pass game? There's going to be bigger matchups for the Wolverines soon. I know, I know Texas TCU is... is so it's on my list, but I won't really talk about this game at all. I'm not going to talk about it at all. I'm going to watch this game primarily aside Arkansas, Georgia. But other than that, I'm not going to talk about Texas TCU. Um, uh, real quick, uh, there are some other big things here. There's some other small little headlines I have, you know, written down here. Um, Coastal Carolina, Michigan State, and NC State should all cruise to victory. Coastal's playing Louisiana Monroe, who is absolutely terrible. Michigan State's playing Western Kentucky, and NC State is playing Louisiana Tech. How fitting! How fitting! They, they, all all three of those teams should cruise. Clemson is hanging on to dear life. Boston College is looking to take a spot in the top 25, and Clemson does not look very good at all. And hopefully, Wake Forest does not underestimate the Louisville Cardinal. I mean, I know Louisville, you know. Did not look good in the opener against Ole Miss, but they racked off some good wins. You know, they racked off a big win against UCF uh, earlier this year, and Wake Forest cannot get caught lacking. And as far as some other teams go in the top 25 that I don't have on here for their matchups, UCLA, Ohio State, Auburn, Texas A&M, and Fresno State. All these teams have big tests. Fresno State's taking on Hawaii. Hawaii is always difficult. Texas A&M's taking on Mississippi State. They've been a tricky team to watch this year, and Mississippi State beat NC State. Remember, Auburn is taking on LSU. LSU been looking to get back into the top 25 themselves. They've got LSU's been racking off a couple big victories themselves, and Ohio State's facing Rutgers. Oh boy, Rutgers is not uh, not going to be easy for Ohio State. I mean, they, I mean. Scarlet Knights took Michigan's to the limit, and you know this cannot this cannot be the same thing, you know, for the Buckeyes. The same thing that has been happening to them week after week. You know they have to dominate, you know, and what perfect way to try and dominate and actually probably not dominate against a reinvigorated Rutgers team. UCLA's taking on Arizona State. Arizona State, you know, they got they got beat up by BYU pretty bad. Well, not really particularly too bad, but UCLA cannot afford to take another loss, you know. They already got a they already got a loss to um, to Fresno State and they can't afford another one, you know. UCLA needs to keep it up. Pac-12 play. So going back up here, and we'll talk about these games that are in between, because there's a couple of games that are in between that I am going to be watching um, in between, you know, the regular time slots, which are weird. And one of these games that is going to be weird is a top 10 matchup between Cincinnati and Notre Dame. Both these teams, essentially, both their playoff spots are on the line. Both of these teams are fighting for a playoff spot. This is the game for Cincinnati. This is it. You lose this game, the Bearcats are done. You can write them off, put them in the history books next to a bunch of other group of five teams that had high expectations and didn't get to the playoff. And Notre Dame, same boat here. They've looked atrocious at times all season. You know, their defense got it together, 
but at the same time, it feels like the offense, I don't know what this offense is, it feels like it needs to run with Kyron Williams, I've been saying that, you know, for the longest time, and it feels like Notre Dame is doing that, but at the same time, the quarterback situation has been a little bit wonky, because Jack Cohn, you know, he, he did not play well against Wisconsin, he's had some times where he has not played well at all, I mean, look at the Toledo game, and now they and now they got Pine up in there, you know, and I'm not sure if Jack Cohn's still injured or not, but, you know, if Pine goes in there and things, you know, seem to be running smoothly, then we got a quarterback problem in Notre Dame. Cincinnati has a defense that is tenacious. I mean, look at what they did to Indiana, you know, a couple weeks back. Look at what they did to them for its turnovers a couple weeks back. And, you know, that... that I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. This is going to be one hell of a game, though. Going to be one hell of a game. My goodness. Um, for Oregon, as we move to the actual 330 games, you know, the 330-230 games, for Oregon, they cannot overlook Stanford. Stanford, they played UCLA tough, but Oregon, you know, they got to get off to a better start than what they did against Arizona. They looked sluggish for most of that game until very late when the defense decided to finally wake up. You know, C.J. Burdell's had some good plays at times, but again, you know, Oregon's got to wake up. They got to wake up, and they and they got to wake up now. You know, they got they got to wake up quickly. If they don't wake up and get caught lacking, then that's it for the Pac-12. If Stanford beats Oregon, that that may be the death death kneel for the Pac-12 conference right there. We're, we're still we're still only in October. We're about to start October, and Pac-12 gets eliminated from playoff contention in Week Five. You know that that's par for the course at this point. <laughs> you know, just the conference of conference of cannibals, conference of cannibals, not conference of champions, conference of cannibals at this point. All right, okay. Now that I'm back, Ole Miss Alabama is another tough matchup for Bama's defense. And, you know, Ole Miss's defense started to resurge a little bit with Matt Coral leading the offense, especially. You know, that fast offense is putting up huge numbers. Matt Coral is looking to, you know, get his Heisman moment. We all know some Heisman moments have come against Bama. I mean, look at Johnny Football. Could this be? Could this be Ole Miss's big moment? We're wondering because I mean Bama's Bama's still tough, you know. Bama's a tough team and all that. Um, they they haven't looked as scary as they once were, you know, this year. But in, in their in their biggest test so far against Florida, they didn't look like a scary threat at all, you know, for most of that second half. And that's what Ole Miss needs to do. They need to look at that second half tape for against Florida and see what they can do to stop Bama. But if Bama can't stop that speed, that speedy offense that Ole Miss likes to implement, it's going to be a long afternoon. It's going to be a long afternoon, and it's going to be, it's going to mean a lot of things, you know. Because Bama has not looked like the number one team, in all honesty. There really isn't, there really hasn't been a team that has especially shown out or anything like that. It has gone completely crazy out there, on the field and off the field either. So, what about Oklahoma, Kansas State? It's there because both of these teams are struggling. Kansas State did lose last week, but this is a game where Kansas State has had Oklahoma's number. As remember last year, Kansas State lost to Oklahoma, or rather, Kansas State beat Oklahoma. Not, 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 no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Kansas State beat Oklahoma. My bad. And, you know, Oklahoma only scored 16 points against West Virginia lowest point total in a while and we're still wondering what, what in the world's going to happen with the Sooner team because guess who's awaiting them in Dallas the Cotton Bowl oh you know you know who I want to hype up but I'm glad the AP and the coaches polls and the media haven't really said anything about Texas this week thankfully thank God for that in between all, all three of these games and Cincinnati Notre Dame, which is at 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Eastern, Florida, Kentucky. Kentucky is unbeaten, and they have a defense that is looking to prove something. And Florida's still trying to work some things out because, you know, they looked 
pretty good in that first half against Tennessee, you know, at times. And then there were moments, or rather I should say in the second half, but in the first half, boy, this game was much closer than it needed to be for most of that game because Tennessee's not really that good. You know, Tennessee's still not back. I'm sorry. Um, and Florida, you know, they, they still have an Emory Jones problem, I think. They still have that problem. And I has, I'm still thinking, you know, who, when are they going to put Anthony Richardson in? When are they going to, you know, when are they going to do that? When are they going to get this offense, you know, moving in a spectacular fashion, this you know, this, this power run stuff that, that Dan Mullen likes to incorporate just isn't going to work in the long run. It didn't work against Alabama at the end, and it didn't work, you know. It, it didn't work when it needed to, you know, at times. You know, they need, to get, they need to get a spark. They need to get something downfield. They need to get these wide receivers involved. They need to get a passing game going. Kentucky might be the team to do that against. So what about... Oklahoma State Baylor both these teams are undefeated both these teams need to step it up you know I'm still concerned a little bit about Oklahoma State's offense their defense was excellent last week by the way a little bit concerned about that offense still Baylor is an unknown you know I have, did not see Baylor beat Ohio I mean not wow Iowa State I did not see Baylor beat Iowa State except for the last play at the end of the game but this will be my first time seeing these Bears, and guess who's calling the game? RG3 is calling the game. My goodness, this is going to be fun. A top 20 matchup? Mm, it's going to be real spicy. going to be a really spicy matchup. And for some reason, Indiana-Penn State is the Saturday night football game. I don't know why, but I mean, the only real reason this is is because this is a revenge game for Penn State. Remember, Phoenix beat Penn State on a last-second play last year that we still kind of debate about to this day and that's, that's really all this game has going for it because Indiana is what two and two right now or one and two or whatever not a good Indiana is not good this year sorry it's okay but alas we made it to big sky after dark I did say there was gonna be an FCS matchup down the line that I was gonna talk about that I didn't know it was gonna be this one so this is a top ten. This is this is a top five matchup. Top top five or top ten matchup. I believe it's top five. Let me check real quick. Okay, right now as it currently stands, um, I don't believe the rankings have been released yet. But this is slated to be a top six matchup, not top five or anything like that, um, for the FCS. And it's good for the Big Sky to get a game like this on ESPN two. Again, this is going to be a thriller because Eastern Washington with Eric Berrier has been lighting up the scoreboard. And Montana's defense is one hell of a slouch. We're going to find out more about this Montana team in this game. This is a big game. Remember, Montana beat Washington. Eastern Washington also beat an F FBS team in UNLV, I believe. So both these teams are top five caliber, really top tier teams in the FCS right now. And the FCS, of course, you know, is constantly changing their landscape as well. They, can, this stuff continuing to go on, you know, under our noses, under a lot of people's noses. And you know, there's been what 10 or 11 FCS over FBS wins this year, which is crazy, a crazy amount. That doesn't really happen that often, you know. So. Again, this is going to be one hell of a matchup. It's way better than watching Pac-12 After Dark because Pac-12 After Dark has been underwhelming. Now, UCLA, Arizona State, I will try. It'll be either that game or the Fresno State Hawaii game that I'll watch. You know, in this late window after most of these games in the uh, seven, six central window wrap up. But this one, this Montana Eastern Washington matchup right here. It's going to be a doozy. We have top 10 matchups, top 20 matchups, top 5 matchups all day long on Saturday. Can can I get an amen in the chat? Amen in the comment section, I mean. I've been messing up today, but that's okay. I will see you all on Saturday night, Sunday morning, you know, for, for your recap of this week, because this is going to be one hell of a week. Let's do this, guys. Let's digest the gloriousness of college football. Take care.